today I want to show you how to whiten teeth in GIMP. So if you're ready, let's do it. Hello, my name is Chris Parker and I help creative artists just like you fulfill your creative vision. So today, like I mentioned, we're going to learn how to whiten teeth. So here is the before image and here is the final edit. So we can see yellow teeth now white teeth. So we're going to make these yellow teeth whiter, brighter, and we're going to fix some defects in the image as well. If you want to use this same image to follow along with and practice what you learn, you can find the link to download this image in the description below or just use any image of your own. Go ahead and open up an image and we'll get started. So the first thing we need to do is duplicate this layer by clicking right here so we can work non-destructively. That way, if we make a mistake or if we're unhappy with the edit at the end, we can revert back to the original layer. Now the key to this particular edit is making a precise selection of the teeth and only the teeth because we want to apply that edit to, well, just the teeth. And when you make a selection and apply an edit, it's confined to the inside of that selection. So the selection tool we're going to use is this one right here. It's called the free select tool. But before we do that, go ahead and grab your zoom tool and click and drag around the mouth so you can zoom into it. Now grab your free select tool with the letter F so you can begin making your selection, which you can do by clicking and dragging around the area that needs to be selected. So I'm going to go ahead and outline her lips right here. And you want to make sure you're staying on the inside of the lips here so you're not selecting any part of the lip. But if you go over like I did right here and you selected that part of the lip, you can actually remove that from your selection. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But first we need to close out the selection. So I'm going to go ahead and come down here and make sure I'm going around the gums as well so that they're not part of the selection. Now in order to close out our selection, we need to go back to where we started from. And once you get into that area and you get close to that starting point, you will see this yellow circle. That's your indication that you can close out your selection. And once you release your mouse button, you will end up with this outline or this dashed outline or what is also known as marching ants. And that is the selection. Now, like I mentioned, we need to remove this part of the selection. And we can do that by coming over here and clicking on this icon right here to subtract from the selection. Or you can hold down your control key to activate that tool as well. But I'm going to go ahead and click right here and click and drag around this area, but it's not working. Sometimes with GIMP, things don't work out the way we want because of bugs. Now, the way I found to get around this is by coming over here and selecting my move tool and then reselecting my free select tool here. And then I should be able to click and drag around this area here to deselect that part of the selection, which it does. All right, so now what we need to do is apply our edit inside of the selection here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the yellow teeth and we're going to desaturate the teeth, which is going to make them whiter. So the tool to do that is our hue saturation tool, which is located under our color menu right here. Click on hue saturation and then adjust your saturation slider here to the left and boom, you have whiter teeth. How cool is that? So I'm right around minus 50. For this particular image, I would recommend between minus 50 to minus 60. If you go too far and you go all the way down to minus 100, which removes all the color, you end up with grayish teeth, not so much white teeth, and it looks unnatural, unhealthy, fake, whatever you want to call it. So that's why I recommend between minus 50 to minus 60. I think I'm going to actually go right around minus 60. So there you have it. You now have whiter teeth. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to actually retouch the teeth. So let's go ahead. Actually, let's do this first. I want to make the teeth just a little bit brighter. So let's increase our lightness to the right here to around plus nine to plus 10. Again, you don't want to go too far because it's going to look fake. And this kind of reminds me of that Jim Carrey movie where he turned into a cartoon and he had a, these big white teeth and it looked cartoonish. Well, this kind of reminds me of that and it's fake. So again, we don't want to go too far. I think right around plus 10 looks pretty good. Adjust it according to what you think looks good and go ahead and click OK. 
All right, so if you take a look at her teeth right here, these two, we can see there's a real dark spot right here. There's also a dark spot in between her teeth here as well, and there's a little dark spot right here. Now, I'm not sure if this is due to a shadow being cast on the teeth, or maybe it's cavities or a combination of both, but I want to brighten up those parts of the image to retouch them so they look a little bit better than they do right now. So the tool of choice for this particular edit is our dodge and burn tool, which we can grab from our toolbar right here, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, which is shift plus D. Now this is two tools in one. We have a burn tool and a dodge tool, and they will affect the image differently. And you need to make sure you have the correct tool selected in order to brighten up that part of the image where it's going to be applied. So by default, we have our burn tool selected. Now, if you go over here in your tool options and scroll down, you can select the dodge tool right here. So the burn tool is going to darken up parts of the image where it's applied and the dodge tool is going to brighten it up. So you wanna make sure you have dodge selected. Now, the other thing we wanna do is we want to adjust this item right here. It's called force. And this is going to apply the edit at a certain density or a certain amount. And by default, it's set at 50. So when you apply this, it's going to be 50% of an adjustment. So if I click and drag right here, we can see it's pretty bright and it's too bright. But if I increase this to 100, it's going to be even brighter. So it's applying that particular edit at a stronger strength at that level. So it's too much. We want to lower that down really, really low, like three is what I want for this particular edit. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that with Command or Control plus the letter Z. I'm going to click down here and drag over to the left until I get it to three. So the goal is to make this edit look as natural as possible. And by using a lower setting like this, we can add the edit multiple times and build up the edit to create a more natural looking edit. So let's try it out. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to increase my brush size just a little bit larger. And I'm using the scroll button on my mouse to resize the brush. And if you have a scroll button and it's not working for you, if you want to resize with the scroll button, I do have a video tutorial showing you how to set that up. So check that out in the description below. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start up here and click and drag down and release. And we can see just by doing that, we have it much brighter than it was before. And I'm going to continue doing that until it blends in with this part of the tooth. So it blends together naturally. Maybe one more time right here. And then I'm going to do the same for this tooth. Click and drag, click and drag. And that builds up that edit to be much more natural. Now I can kind of see that dark area still right there. So maybe I want to do it one more time. So that's not too bad. Maybe one more time over here as well. And then I can do the same with the inside of her teeth right here. Click and drag down, click and drag down, maybe one more time. And then for this part of the tooth, I can actually use my clone tool instead. I'm gonna grab my zoom tool with the letter Z so I can click and zoom in a couple times here to get real close. And we can see there's a real dark spot right here. So I'm gonna grab my clone tool with the letter C. I'm gonna make that smaller, of course. Now, before we can actually use the clone tool, we need a targeted part of the tooth to be used to cover up the other part that needs to be retouched, which is right here. So we need to hold down our control key and then click on an area to clone or copy from because the clone tool copies the pixels from one area and then replaces another area with those pixels. Now, the other thing we need to do is we need to go back to our tool options here and increase the force back to the default. So just click on this icon to do that and then go ahead and click and drag right here to retouch that part of the image. I'm not liking the area that I cloned from, so I'm gonna go ahead and retarget an area right here with my control key, click, and then paint in this area right here. I'm gonna grab my zoom tool and then hold down my control key to zoom out to see if the edit worked and it looks like it did. Let's go ahead and deselect now with control, shift plus A, and then we're going to zoom all the way out with Control Shift plus J. 
And let's take a look at the before and after. Let's go ahead and turn this layer back on and then turn this one on and off to see your final edit. And that's how you whiten teeth in GIMP. If you want to learn more about editing and retouching in GIMP, I have some more advanced tutorials which you can find in the description below. The first one is going to show you how to remove complex backgrounds and retain hair detail at the same time. And then I'll show you how to replace that background with a new one. It's awesome. Now the other tutorial that you're going to want to check out is how to remove people from backgrounds. Not just any backgrounds, not a simple, plain, solid color background, but a complex background with a lot of detail. These are more advanced, but I've created them for beginners as well. So go ahead and check those out. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can be updated on new tutorials and like and comment on this tutorial to help support this particular tutorial because the more people like and comment, the more people will find this particular tutorial. And I will be encouraged to create more tutorials in the future. So thank you for supporting my channel and this video in particular. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.